See, now Tom and Jerry has remained crowned as a childhood favorite from the 1940s to present day. And as a kid, we had access to Tom and Jerry from Cartoon Network, Boomerang, and VHS tapes. For that matter, it's had a big ass influence on my internal and external behavior, as well as my musical taste. But we'll get back to that a bit later. What effect has it had on you? Hey, fucking subscribe. Anywho, bruh. I want you guys to look at this list with all the Toms and all the Jerry's with their corresponding years and think on which year or years were the best. And now this is simply your opinions. I know exactly which ones are the best and that's factual. But first, we're gonna talk about what happened February 10th, 1940. The very first episode of Tom and Jerry came out or rather Jasper and Jinx. This was the very first debut of the show so they didn't really have the Tom and Jerry name just yet, but that's okay. This was a point in time where Jerry did not drop his balls and he was simply not on timing yet, bro. Tom was fucking him up. And it also seems that Jerry simply does not have the IQ that we know him to have within his first episode, at least within the first half. After Tom had all of his flawless victories, he had a hiccup when Jerry poked him right in the fucking eye and he got frustrated. He started chasing him around and he had a vase. That's where things went south, bro. Stomping around the corner came Aunt Jemima from the fucking syrup brand. Just angry as shit. And also kind of ghetto. I'm not gonna lie. This shit, this was back in the racist time. So we, we know how that shit go. But she simply told Tom that if he broke any more shit, that that nigga's hitting the door. And that simply lit a fire within Jerry's tiny ass mouse brain to say, oh, maybe I can torment him if I try to break shit. And so he did. Tom had an idea to solve the blackmailing, but it, it didn't help out for too much longer. Jerry pulled out his ultimate move, went on the top shelves, and started throwing down all the plates and bowls that he's seen in sight. By the end of it, all the plates, bowls, cups, everything fell to the ground and shattered, and all Jamama came back and yanked Tom House out of the crib. And that pronounced Jerry's very first victory. Now jump into 1952, just over a decade after the very first episode premiere. One of my most memorable Tom and Jerry episodes, Tom and the Two Musketeers. Jerry the Musketeer was sent a task from an old friend, basically asking Jerry to train his son to become a musketeer. And it didn't turn out to be an easy job. Now, I couldn't tell you what the musketeer's job of a mouse is, but I guess they're just stealing food from whoever the fuck this is, King Henry? I don't know. As Jerry's new accomplice kept fucking everything up on their little musketeer mission, they disturbed King Henry, thus alerting Tom, the guard. And his objective from the king is to stop the disturbance. If he fails, an of comes your head. As we know, Jerry's pretty resilient, so he kept trying to train this musketeer and go out into the field getting these missions to grab food and stuff with no hesitation. And Tom wasn't about to just sit back and tolerate that disrespect. So he went out there to handle business. He had his sword slicing and dicing, you know, clashing swords with Jerry, getting all done just for things to get too loud and for him to get clapped. And now we're gonna time skip all the way to present day, Tom and Jerry Singapore. I will say it's not as in depth as it used to be back in the 40s, 50s, maybe even 60s and whatnot, but it's still pretty damn good, I'm not gonna lie. I just recently watched it and it's pretty damn entertaining still. The music still slaps, the entertainment is still there, the comedy is still there, Bro, it's it's not bad for the newer generation. Not for Gen Alpha though. They they don't, they could never watch something like this. That that's a different breed. But since we're pretty much caught up now, we can come back to this list. And I know we didn't go through every single year. Uh, let, uh God forbid we talk about 1963 to 1967. That shit was just bad. But bro, from 1943 to 1959, fire. Those were the best shows. The those those were the episodes that everybody can have a single clip inside their head of either Jerry doing something crazy or Tom just being cool as shit. And there's no arguing that. Like I, that's genuinely like that's the gap to where the best Tom and Jerry just ever existed, bro. That that was the time frame. It was the whole ever that had such a huge influence on me and 
how I've grown into the person that I am today. From an internal standpoint, it was really soothing to watch Tom and Jerry as a child because we didn't really have cable at the crib, bro. We had the fucking antenna shit and you know, the, the news would come on on Saturday, Sonic X would come on, but like, bro, I would watch fucking Tom and Jerry, bro. I will pop in the VHS tapes and we had stacks in them. We had so many episodes. I would just binge watch that shit 24 seven before the internet and before me playing games and shit tom and jerry was that thing for me that kept me sane my nigga from all the elementary bullshit all the females that was rejecting me it just kept me like okay fuck she sure did reject me but i have tom and jerry at home now as far as external behavior it, it i mean it made me petty i i started to take up uh as jerry as a Jerry character when I was younger, I would just do a lot of petty shit because I had the brains to do so. I was a, a smart young lad, I would say, and you know, my siblings, trust me, they will say it to this day that I would egg them the fuck on mentally just because I could, I knew I could. So like making somebody sad, making someone mad, feel bad about something bro that was all me because i i just had that brain manipulation that jerry jerry i i, I got it from jerry man don't blame me i apologize and lastly my musical taste classical music has been such a big thing for me in my life i'm not a pianist just yet but i truly would love to learn more songs on the piano I just haven't had the time to really take up and do so and that didn't really hit me until about 10th grade I heard some music from Chopin, uh, Mozart and stuff, and then I'm like, yo, this shit is really fucking good. Like, why is it so good? And I would just like have playlists on my my uh, Spotify of nothing but Mozart, uh, Chopin, uh, Beethoven, just all the classics, you know? And in my head, like I'm just jamming to it, like having such a good ass time. And y'all would never know that I'm, I'm walking through the holes with my beats on and I'm just bobbing the fuck out, listening to classical music. And as I kept asking the question of why it's so good to me, like why am I dancing to classical music? It, it hit me. I'm like, oh, Tom and Jerry, they literally only had like classical music. They had operas and shit that was not only just good for cultural music, but it was entertaining so when i started to hear classical music again when i was older i didn't just see it as music but it was a form of entertainment which was so beautiful when i first discovered it i would love to play more of the classic songs that i that i heard while growing up i would love to just have the ability to just sit down in front of the piano and just bust out some some tom and jerry fanatics bro it would be beautiful but yeah those are the main three effects that it's had on my life and again i like to ask that question what effect has it had on you thanks for swinging by and watching the video i hope you enjoyed it here's another video that you can watch for entertainment